I did that thing, Justin. What's that? Where you go live, but you forgot to set all your data. Oh, you forgot to set oh, all your streams no. and stuff. But I got it just in time. Good. So everyone knows it's the Weird Things program starting in just a moment. Hello, everybody. Oh, a new, new Monster Cat song, Daybreak by Bijou. Hi, everybody. We're gonna get started in just a moment. Hello. Oh, there's there's the there's the old boy. Uh, indeed. Uh, oh, that's what I wanted. What do I want? I want this. One. Do, 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 How's your do, Friday do, going? Do, 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 do. I'm bummed, man. You're bummed? Yeah. Oh. I'm bummed. Uh, my, uh, why's my, that? My uh, family couldn't make the trip this weekend. Oh no! So I had a whole family weekend set up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Aww. The uh, the kiddo got sick. Yeah, that happened. And uh, yeah, so you know it happens. Is she feeling? Are they feeling okay? Are they feeling good? Better? Uh, yeah. No, I think I. She is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 up and down is how it was described to me. Mm. Up and down. Yeah. That's how they. That's. You know. That's Aren't like, we all, sister? That's right. Aren't we all? <laughs> Hey everybody, we'll get started in uh, just a moment. We are live. We won't be going until the break of day, but we will be doing this. I, uh, I grabbed a uh, lemonade, it's like one of those little drink powder things. Yeah. I grabbed a lemonade one and I put it in my, my blender bottle. Cool. Yep. I, <laughs> so I'm throwing the wrapper away. Yep. And I'm reading it and it goes, makes like a gallon of lemonade. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so I've got a, um, I'm going to be sipping. Potent. I'm going to be nursing this one. Yeah. You got a potent, a potent nade going on. Well, no, really the key is, is just drink it a quarter of the way and then just keep refilling. Right. That's the move. Is it actually lemonade, or is it like like lemonade flavored, like liquid IV hydration y stuff? Or is it just sugar and lemon? It's crystal light. Oh sh shoot! Does it also have caffeine? Or are you gonna, are you just no. gonna be jacked? No, 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 there's no, no, no caffeine, there's caffeine in, it. in it. We just had a thing on. Uh, uh, Heaton was talking about how he made crystal light once, and and found out later that it was caffeinated. Yeah. No. I that we just had there was just literally this conversation on where and out rock. Because I was blown away by the idea that Crystal Light would have caffeine in it for lemonade when I thought maybe for tea, for iced tea. Okay, there is something called Crystal Light Energizing Variety Pack. Um. And I don't think that's what I got. I think we've got- Crystal Light with caffeine is a product formerly called Crystal Light Energy. Uh, is Crystal Light Lemonade makes two quarts, but I don't think. Yeah, no, I, uh, I yeah, that's, 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 that's my jam. Uh, just wait until I uh, get you guys live on the air to try dipping celery into it. I'm oh, I forgot that. that. Yeah, that's good. It's actually, yeah. yeah. No, oh, I yeah. Leave it. Hi, folks. You guys want to do some weird things? Let's do it. Yep. Um, this is going to be so fucking silly. <laughs> 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 There's uh, no the way, one to stop way. us. By no <laughs> one to stop us. <laughs> We're doing bits and voices. That's right. <laughs> I 
I'm just I'm gonna be calling for Bryce to give us the next topic. Like <laughs> I'm gonna be calling it Monday. Yeah. It'll be a whole it'll be a hoot. All right, here we go to do the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm your host, as always, one Bryce Castillo. Joined as always with one Justin Robert Young. Hi! And Brian, capital B, Brushwood. Man, it's good to be a special guest for the first time on this show. Welcome back. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. This is we're our... not Barbenheimer knit. Nope. We're, 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 we're back together. Uh, I'm back on the show. I yeah. missed last week's show. I Because I was Barbenheimer and... Yeah. Oh, wait, I missed it too. Also, Brian missed last week's show. It yeah. was oh, uh, me and Andrew. Were you, were you Barbenheimer in it? Uh, I think I w- I think I was writing the book. Did seventeen hundred words today? Did you? Yeah. That's oh. good. I also hit uh, infinite. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. It's a you hell know, of a day. It it undercuts <laughs> it undercuts the I was working hard when you talk about how you did in Marvel. No, it's Sometimes good. you're winning so hard. For the record, <laughs> note 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 which one came first. Because <laughs> I guarantee, if you weren't trying to write, then he would have just would have texted me that he got the infinite <laughs> when it happened. <laughs> yep. All right, uh, well, uh, welcome to the Weird Things program. I've got some stories here for you. Don't worry, everyone. You can calm down now. Yeah, that em- isn't going to get silly. That emergency alert about a lioness in your neighborhood has been rescinded. <laughs> I heard I heard something what? about that. Where was this? Where is this? So police were first alerted to an animal in klein um, an area just outside of Berlin. Oh, that's right. This was around Wednesday, uh, around midnight on Wednesday. Uh, people thought that there was a big cat uh, chasing a wild boar. Apparently, someone who was uh, at the scene had recorded a video of it and passed it on. Initially, police thought that there was a lioness in the middle of uh, in the middle of, of, of Germany, but uh, uh, after a couple of days of examining it, uh, they say that uh, they're uh, they've only found boars. Wait, they, hold on. So don't what worry, was the, no lion. What was the best evidence that they had to say that it was a big cat, let alone a lioness? Well, and uh, on top of that, when they when you say examining it, was it a map? But <laughs> no, they they, <laughs> no, they they finally realized after days. <laughs> oh, we in Germany. <laughs> is no lioness is here. <laughs> well. Uh, Apparently, people had reported it. They had taken a video. It was dark. It was around midnight. Um, apparently, uh, investigators think that they just saw a video of two wild boars running around, not on oh, top of each other. No, just ch- like chasing each other. Around. The wild wild boars are actually pretty common yes. in in this part of of, of Europe. Um, uh, the mayor said, quote, we will return to our usual usual vigilant program, and we think there is no acute danger for klein now or th- for the south of Berlin, yeah. adding that police would be able to step back up right away if the situation, just in case they find that lioness. We'll be ready for it. Well, what, this is actually one of the moments that we had, and we recently re- revisited it in the uh, uh, 20, 30, 20th edition uh, of mm-hmm. Scam Sasquatch and the Supernatural. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a story, I, I, I forget where, because I don't have my slides in front of me, but the Bleedorp Zoo had a red panda and it escaped, and uh, they said, hey, everyone, there's a red fan- panda afoot, um, and they got uh, hundreds or thousands of people uh, very specifically describing where they saw the red panda, and then they found that the the body of the be- red panda had gotten run over by a train just outside the zoo. So, um, so that, all that, those reports would have been wrong. Exactly. That, that classic argument of, like, uh, well, you're telling me everyone who saw a Bigfoot is wrong? And, like, we have evidence that that can happen. So yeah. um, in this case, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit of social contagion. Like, once you get the idea that there's a lioness about Everybody's going to see that lioness. Can we also acknowledge the fact that this is a German landlocked version of the first act of Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> uh, including uh, in German, uh, a whaler says, Do you want the lioness? <laughs> first I pluck his eyes out, <laughs> then I then I got him, <laughs> then I sell the meat on the black market. <laughs> It'll cost you. <laughs> we go to Berlin. 
Lionesses in Berlin. <laughs> You're going to need a bigger wall. <laughs> I just, I would hate to. I, I <laughs> close down. Oh, uh, uh, go. Uh, nope, never mind. <laughs> I uh, uh, I feel I do That's feel the bad. Motto in Germany. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, I do feel bad for the for the people of Kleinmack now. Yeah. I think if uh, it's 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 once bitten twice. Well, no, they I guess no one's gotten bitten, but you're 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 you're, you're doubly <laughs> you're doubly concerned about it yeah. just because you heard about it. Like even if there wasn't a shark in the water, you you're in the water there. Someone said it. You're not. You're thinking it. You know, our brains have a tough time separating. Reality and and, well, and fiction. Well, and and uh, as a matter of fact, um, just to uh, do a brief aside, to yesterday we recorded the bonus uh, episode of our show, Great Night, mm-hmm. and we were talking about the movie Barbie of all things. And um, everything is a Rorschach test when when uh, you kind of want to see what you see. And I saw elements of Fight Club in there. A couple of them I think are indisputable, but but then once you start seeing them. You, it's easy to track other things on, whereas you, Justin, saw more blazing saddles yes. in there. Yes. Mm-mm. And and we all kind of want to find things. I mean, we we uh, uh, are, are we're plan we're, we're we're planning to write an, an episode about something very similar to this about uh, just how you are able to find connections between. Two th- if you really want to connect two things, you can. Well, yeah. I mean, we are pattern recognizing creatures. That that's what. Uh, has allowed us to survive, if not thrive, throughout uh, uh, all of human history. And and sometimes that happens with art, right? Like, it happens in everything that we do. That is the greatest way to understand the human mind, is just understand that we are constantly on the lookout for patterns, and we are trying to make sense of them. But I'll tell you what, man. Uh, when you're going to make, when you're going to involve, engage with the heuristic of shortcuts and pattern recognition, there's a difference between the art of the movie Barbie and... The fear that a lion's going to eat your child. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna lean faster on those heuristics. Well, um, yeah, I guess that that's the thing about this particular situation is that it's odd that it came to lioness. That's why I was asking for the the the, the oh, initial the video or whatever proof that they had because it's it's interesting that it wasn't just hey, there's an unknown creature we're on the lookout. We think it could be a big cat. Right. But instead, it was there's a lioness here. Uh, we don't have any example of lioness poop. We don't have any example of, you know, it, it eating corpses. or or something like that. Well, yeah. th- there's scavenging. Uh, in fact, in fact, that video that they took probably did help them figure out it wasn't a lioness um, because they were able to look at the little bits that you could see. The the back legs did not look like lion legs. Guess what? They looked like boar legs. Mm-hmm. Um, well, things like that. And 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 so the video ended up being this like through line where people could kind of hook onto a, a, a lioness. Yeah, I could see a lioness where it's also kind of shown that eh, it almost certainly wasn't that. Well, so uh, another example I, where I could see this working out is my parents used to have a river house south of Houston in a uh, county called Brazoria. And uh, there's a lot of loosey-goosey, a lot of people who have a lot of land. Mm-hmm. Maybe they made some money here or there and they do weird things. Um, uh, one but of we do weird things. Was, we're was doing that, it right now. That's was what that, we're doing. Yeah. There was at Are you least, clear on that? at least one local uh-huh. who was known to have a few exotic animals. Mm. So imagine somebody... Like a gerbil? It, like a hamster? It, no, uh, like, like a tiger or a lioness oh, oh. or a lynx or, oh. you know, it, it, like, uh, it, 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 there's a very quiet they, gray, they, they, gray slash black Things that you name thing. sports teams after. Uh, correct, <laughs> yes. Things things that drug... De- I'll take things that drug dealers love to collect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but... In that case, I could imagine in that area, if a unusual video surfaced on Nextdoor or Facebook or whatever, then somebody might just say, yeah, you know, uh, uh, so-and-so and blah, blah, blah have these critters, and maybe they're not on Nextdoor or Facebook. And then that shapes the lens mm-hmm. through which you see everything else. Yeah. And then everything becomes evidence for 
your theory becoming more and more right. When, when you've got a cougar guy in the neighborhood, yeah. the chances of cougars go way up. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Wait, wait, wait. They cougars certainly... are in your neighborhood. <laughs> right. Click here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they want to meet you. They want to meet you. <laughs> they love to meet you. Um, they, uh, certainly, once you know that there's cougars in your neighborhood, yep. you go from zero to one. Oh. And then after that, you it's go, just you a go, matter you of... Go, you go from six to midnight, my friend. <laughs> I go from zero to two. I tell my pants. Uh well, there we go. Uh, uh, sleep well. No one can stop us. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's silly, dear no. listener? No, I think you're at I... the beginning. Oh, just you wait till this next silly. story. <laughs> uh, a couple weeks back, a new study in nature, ecology, and evolution made a case for the new bisexual king of the jungle. Who do you guess it is? George Elton Michael. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for monkeys. All right. um, monkeys. Uh, the scientists. Not, uh, not bonobos. Uh, well, the scientists watched a group of rhesus uh, macaques over a three-year period. Yeah. It was right in front of us the whole time. Uh, Should have seen it coming. Rhesus macaque. <laughs> in Puerto Rico. Just power through, listener. In, pa- in Puerto Rico. <laughs> It's a scientist from the Imperial <laughs> College of London uh, found. How you doing, friend? Over these three this years, this is a rhesus macaque. <laughs> it was more common. It was more common for males to engage in sex with the same what kind of what kind of male than with the opposite uh, of a rhesus macaque. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Researchers reported that 72% of the 236 male monkeys had either mounted or were mounted by other males, mm. whereas only 46% participated in heterosexual uh, sex. Uh, this just in, in a statement from the macaques, uh, specifically uh, 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 Reese's. Uh, My pieces. Uh, yeah. Macaques, mm-hmm. two great tastes. It tastes great. Yep, together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so this has spawned a bit of a theory of why uh, homosexual sex happens in the animal kingdom. Uh, and the theory is that males who have sex together have an evolutionary advantage over heterosexual counterparts. Uh, we've got a, a more to the theory here, but uh, w- would you like to take a crack at, at, at expanding on that? Uh, I, I, I have a serious answer. But I don't yeah. know if Justin's going to shout Reese's Macaques. <laughs> Justin, do you want to go? Only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, what we've talked about the uh, 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 the book Sapiens and uh, about how humans are particular, uh, uh, you know, Homo sapiens are unique in that we're the only uh, class uh, genus species. We're the only genus that killed everyone else in our species. And uh, uh, one of the theses in the book is that, uh, yeah, we're able to tell stories and we're able to think in terms of, you know, this Dunbar's number, 150 units or whatever. And and once you stop thinking of individual uh, monkeys and instead think of individual tribes as like a multicellular organism, and I've, I've, I've said some of this before, but all of a sudden a lot of things that don't make sense on paper make sense. Like the idea of, of course you need a crazy person to think they're a wizard. Of course you need an insane suicidal person who is constantly chasing danger at the periphery of the entire thing. Of course you need a campfire so that at the end of every day everybody can resync all the information that they've learned about what plants are poisonous and and religions and stories and all that stuff. Mm. And likewise, um, when you think of a multicellular organism, uh, of course you need sexually flexible individuals in every single uh, multicellular organism. Hmm. Uh, okay. That, that, that's, that, that, I think that's, that's an interesting take. Justin, do you have uh, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, beyond obviously, there's there's it, the reason why this headline is interesting is because the phrase "evolutionary edge" is there to homosexual uh, 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 urges, right? Which mm-hmm. would uh, you would normally think, because of how reproduction works, that evolutionary that's that's the key word that makes this uh, uh, exciting and interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. Uh, look, at, look at these look at these monkeys, these man. Gay monkeys. You you, you uh, walked right past edging, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, pr- I'm proud of you. Yeah. Don't worry. You snapped it off. Reese's. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that's Walk an interesting back. perspective, Justin. Actually, uh, and I, I I I'm 
I'm going to read this off of this Business Insider report here. Yeah. Um, by using genetic tests and family trees, uh, the scientists found that same-sex behavior was 6.4% heritable. Oh, so it, there's, there's, back to... there's a gay gene. Um, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's 1996 and science is old is new again. Yeah. Is it genetic or is it not? <laughs> the uh, outside of the ge the genetic side, which I, uh, I you know, obviously I'm a, ge I'm a genetics uh, genius. Yeah. Uh, we, we had some other parts here. The, uh, male monkeys who had sex with, e with each other often backed up their partner in fights, the researchers reported. Moreover, the male monkeys weren't strictly homosexual. They did have sex with females, too. Bisexual macaques had more offspring than their heterosexual counterparts. Mm. Uh, and Vincent Savole uh, Savolainen, a biologist and elite author, said they form bonds and they help each other in a fight. And then the idea is that if they do this, then they might also have access to more females and, in effect, have more babies. There, there's echoes of that in, uh, and I'm only half remembering, please don't cite me on this, but I seem to remember reading uh, books or articles about how in military cultures where it's like people are going off to war, there's like a flat agreement of, hey, if I die or if you don't know where I am, please have sex with my wife, you know, uh, and, and that would strengthen the bond sure. be between them. Yeah, I think. But that how tight was that bond when they were together? Because that's what's happening with these monkeys. These monkeys uh, are banging each other. And then in fights, they're like, well, I'm going to fight for you more because these macaques are mountain mm -hmm. or being mounted or being mounted. and then by the spoils of their war they find that there are more women for which they can both impregnate theoretically yeah at yeah. least a, 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 a evolutionarily and yeah presumably have more children because they're fighting better together I, no. I i i almost wonder whether or not this is something that we look at in our with our human lens again we are all pattern recognizing creatures so we're trying to connect these lessons to our own world but how much of it is just driven by, hey, these are the monkeys that are, these are the macaques that are like just more virile, yes. more aggressive. They're, they're just hornier. They are. Uh, that, they that are would be that. That it, I banging wonder through everything. I, I, I mean, wonder yeah. if if that could be the headline. Is headline hornier macaques breed more? <laughs> yeah. 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 I and and you know that that's that's part of it too. I think there is an interesting. Uh, lens the the human the human lens and and how we read the story because because uh, yeah uh, when it's when it, when you put it in through the lens of like the most virile uh, 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 members of the of the of this unit are going to be the ones who bang more I mean it's just that yes that's just the oh okay I didn't even <laughs> I walked right into that one. Yeah. the more virile the virile macaques of this unit yep <laughs> they're just ram rock straight <laughs> ready to go and breed oh that's it uh well if you want to mm, <laughs> if you want to what save it you can land this yeah if you want to Show your support. Yeah. And you want to breed more episodes of the Weird Things podcast. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go and support us over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash weird things. <sighs> you get all sorts of great things like early access to the After Talk After Things podcast. God damn it. The After <laughs> Things podcast. Yep. The Afterglow. The after mm -hmm. <laughs> You get yep. it. <laughs> you get in the Discord, email updates, all that sort of stuff. Patreon, check it out. Thank you for supporting us. Leave the money on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's called patreon.com slash weird things patreon the table yep why buy the weird things when you get the content for free <laughs> okay well hey here's something that you're gonna get for for free uh presumably if you're yeah. in america uh there's all these streaming services around you've got your netflixes yep. and your hulus but you also got the fast channels the free Ad supported, yeah. like uh, the Zoom Doobies and Zoom Freebies. Yeah. Um, well, here's one that's just free. Okay. It's NASA Plus. Okay. NASA is going to launch an ad free, no cost, family friendly streaming service uh, that will uh, house some of the live coverage of NASA missions. Uh, they will have original video series whatever those end up being they didn't announce any shows with this 
Um, and then eventually this NASA Plus app on mobile and all will burgeon out into just a broader NASA app where you can find out about the agency. Well, and that's all wild. So, so they're starting with a what is positioned as a premium version mm. without the base level version. Yeah. I yeah. guess the base level version is C-SPAN or the Internet. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's so funny that Plus has become has come to mean in branding a streaming service. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's what Disney Plus and and blah blah blah. We we now think of that as you you go to your television or your phone and you watch content. You watch long form content. Uh, I think that this is a really good idea. Uh, uh, this has been a, a recurring thing on um, We're Not Wrong, We're Not Wrong podcast that periodically my new lane is just, hey, what if, like, Andrew's, Andrew Eaton's very, very much against, against government waste and, and Jen Briney is about, hey, the government should be smart and do things for the people. My take, the lane I'm carving out is, mm -hmm. let's understand that Eaton's never going to get his way and Jen's never going to get her, get her way. How about I chart a third way? If we're already wasting gobs of money, how about if we just redirect it to things that we like every once in a while? How about we just, if we're just burning this money, like let's let's just buy some things that that make the populace happy you every once in a while. Uh, and I'm for this. NASA, just one place for which where's the where's the rocket? going to be streamed and well, it'll be on their it. youtube or it'll yeah. be on no, space.com you know, you know or nasa plus on. and 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 just that plus slow motion video that is 4k that's 10 hours of space that i just leave on my television and and now it's just a, a big space thing well, and and they have enough telescopes now that that i don't know simple time lapse videos that go for a I'm half hour straight love it yeah just give me like, all like, that just just show just show me four years of the sun churning and bubbling and all that stuff um sorry if we can pause do you guys hear a thump I, i'm yeah. hearing a thumping coming through justin's microphone my mic still yeah. No, I just heard it. Oh, I, yeah, I don't hear it at all. Somebody. Is it the, can you tap on the table maybe? Does that do it? It's different. Oh, a there. real life. I hear the spirits. Weird, weird things mystery. If you're here with life. us. <clears throat> Viral what marketing for Haunted Mansion <laughs> in theaters <laughs> now. Are you hearing it in real life or just on? I hear it in the mic. Something, I, I thought it was one of our legs hitting. Yeah. Because that's what it, it kind of sounds like that. We well, see, I couldn't even hear it when you did that. Ladies and gentlemen, a live investigation. We're making podcast history right now. Yep. So what? Are, yeah. I, I, sorry. 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 It was. What was it? Or well, I don't know what it was, but. Damn well, dog. I'll tell you what. Maybe the answer is in the new Danny DeVito vehicle, the Haunted Mansion. Yep. Coming to theaters soon. Today. Today. Get your tickets today for the Haunted Mansion. Today. I think it's gone. What? Yeah. We exercised. No. The Haunted Mansion is in theaters right now. <laughs> starring Owen Wilson and Lake at Stanfield. <laughs> and Jamie Lee Curtis as the lady in the orb that you go around <laughs> and she's doing orb things. Also, Jared Leto in prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Man. Haunted Mansion in theaters now. I, I just wish in theaters there was a ride. Now. Hello, and welcome to Movie Phone. <laughs> so that's NASA Plus. Uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see what, what that looks like. Uh, I don't think that they even uh, gave a, uh, a date on this yet. Um, just later this year, I guess. Uh, but but this will be interesting. I, I wonder if they'll still keep 
doing like the YouTube version of their stream. I guess they I'd hope so. would have to. You know. Yeah, I think I mean th this should be a public service where yeah. you know the idea is to get people interested in space and and understand, sh demonstrate to the public where the money that goes into NASA is 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 going, what it is achieving. Uh, and the good news is, wait, did it just happen again? again? Yeah. I why am I not hearing it? I don't know. Is am I the source of it? An ongoing mystery. An ongoing mystery. Ah, it's, I think it's that arm. Is there, is, is there something with that arm where it's like, why, why don't arm? I hear it? This, this air, if I kind of touch it a little bit, what, what about uh, pluck that string? A live mystery unfolding. Well, I hear that. Is that what it sounds like? A little bit. Wait, so we may have actual spirit ghost rapping. If you're here, leave all this in, Bryce. If you're yeah. here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it, 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 genuine, it, we genuine have a genuine hearing. Here. A genuine mystery. Can you isolate the signal? Have you, have you tried opening the, the, listening. the TCP socket? Were you an old fisherman? <laughs> He was. It, it is. It's something. It's 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 something with that desk. It, it's got to be something with that desk or something. But it, I don't know. I uh, I I. I it, well, if the is desk a, is is is. And by the way, uh, uh, we, we, I, don't I don't know. know. We can we could. Okay, now now you're just. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's like, I was not. For the record, <laughs> I, that was the first time I did that. But, but is that what it sounded like? No, it actually sounds like, okay, like that. That I hear, but I've not heard any of the other ones. Well, hold on. Be very quiet. But okay. stop. Should we ask a question? If, when you were spirits. an old spirits, when you were an old it fisherman, stopped. did you catch more than one fish? <laughs> what the heck? We've got did, we've got a ghost. No, oh, okay. it only got one <laughs> fish. <laughs> Was that fish Moby Dick? <laughs> okay. Uh, do, uh, do you know what I found out is that hmm. Mo Moby Dick is filled. With dick jokes. Oh, well, I presume it probably would be, right? Did, did, I mean, did you just hear it again? No, I didn't. Okay, I heard it again. Moby Dick is filled with dick jokes. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he was intentionally being crass. And, yeah. And that's why the title, because uh, I think the original title was The Whale. Yeah. But then it became, I don't know, let's just put <laughs> dicks in, in it. The yeah. Words. yeah. I heard the original one was that dang whale. <laughs> that, that, did it? Did it? Yeah, it just happened. God, I wish I could hear it. Well, I, I got one last story here for you. Okay. Uh, this is a I, this is a a, a a syndrome that I had not heard of before. Um, uh, have you heard of Cotard's syndrome? Co Cotard's <laughs> syndrome. I, I, I have heard the name, but for the life of me, I, I could not tell you what it is. Sure. Um, so, uh, what well, scientists had done a few case studies on people who have got this, uh, in one case, a middle-aged woman who has a history of anxiety and psychosis began experiencing nihilistic delusions. She started saying things like, I am dead. She then stopped eating and refused to take medications because yes. she believed that she was already, uh, dead. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, that, that, that does ring a bell. And it's, uh, 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 it's, I mean, really that's, that's the whole story there. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, this apparently was found, uh, the, the first case is dated back to the 1880s, uh, where uh, French neurologist Jules Cotard, uh, described this new type of dimension mark or depression, excuse me, marked by quote, Anxious melancholia, ideas of damnation or rejection, insensitivity to pain, delusions of non-existence concerning one's own body, and delusions of immortality. So, this is interesting to me because it would seem like this is an application of another mental disorder. Like, that, that there are elements of, 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 of delusion, depression, and hopelessness for which would bring on this. Uh, I, I, I wonder what exactly, what boxes exactly have to be checked to make you feel like, no, I'm really dead, not just dead inside or right. feel ignored or feel uh, unconnected. Like, do, do you have to 
be like, no, I'm not having this conversation or, or this is, well, let's, let's postulate because we're not neuroscientists. Nope. So we don't know, but I would imagine that along with all the other sections of the brain, there's a region that, you know, checks in and reminds you that you're in reality. Yeah. And, you know, strokes can happen in various parts of the lesions can happen in various parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. I could totally picture that connected presence could could get a lesion or uh, a, you know from a stroke and then uh, man what must that be like i mean we, we've seen other equally bizarre behaviors you know like the split brain experiments where you get different answers from different side of the brain sides of the brain mm -hmm. um you know we've talked before about people who are so epileptic that they get hemispherectomies where they literally remove one half of the brain and they're able to function with mm -hmm. just one half of a brain um, yeah. it, it, as we've seen with, uh, in, in politics news, people have strokes and they're able to read, but not speak yep. or hear so yep. well. So a connection with being present, what we perceive as the spark that is life that we wonder if other animals have, I, I, I can see whatever that section of the brain is getting, getting fried. Hmm. Uh, the, that initial case back in 1880, was a 43-year-old woman who claimed that she had no brain, nerves, stomach, or even a soul. She also avoided eating because she considered herself eternal. After a few weeks, uh, doctors prescribed her a, uh, a, a Riprazole, uh, which is a medication to cheat schizophrenia, and her symptoms showed improvement. Uh, they Nowadays, scientists think Kotars may be uh, not its own distinct disease, but kind of what, what we were talking about a little uh, earlier as a symptom of other underlying issues like bipolar, schizophrenia, yeah. depression, drug use or seizures. Uh, uh, the first case that we talked about, uh, she was having money issues and she uh, was hearing voices in her head, um, which is, is, is a part of uh, many different syndromes. Um, but it, but it is, it is, I don't know. I'm, I'm, there's a there's a world where this article that I read about it calls it like zombie disease. People are turning into zombies yeah. and they want to eat brain. Like <laughs> there could have been but but too I, silly. Too okay. That yeah, I'm too <laughs> But uh, uh it, it it's 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 fascinating. Um Yeah, I think that that's that's the the interesting thing is mm -hmm. yeah, I would assume if we were to go to a hundred people and we were to say uh there is a phenomenon where people believe that they are dead. Describe for me what they think that means, how you would define if somebody says that they are dead, what it is that you'd probably get a more varied list of answers than you would think. Because like the concept of being conscious after death has a lot of different uh application well i think uh, maybe this isn't a shared experience but have you ever had a dream where you get killed and for some reason you're still present and thinking yes uh and so so i i i, I too have had that um also the idea of a schizophrenia medication having an effect on it makes sense because schizophrenia as i understand it are kind of the inability to tell whether or not did somebody actually say that or not because, because like, like, yeah, so the dial is set all the way to you hear a voice and you're like, I don't know if that actually happened or not. Yeah. yeah. And then I would imagine that the kind of reverse of that is uh, I could imagine. I don't know. I'm, I'm applying grade school logic to this, but uh, which which is yeah. is uh, is kind of a losing game. Right. Like the, the whole point is that it is it seems to make make this make the, the, the person believe that they're dead or into this uh, sort of spirally state, almost like, uh, I don't know, it's, it almost sounds like a parasite. It sounds like a sci-fi sci movie concept. Well, and, and we've seen that. It's Bird Box. I, it's it's, it's yeah. the Bird Box. Well, and I haven't, uh, I forget which story most recently I saw the conceit in, but the idea was that uh, uh, something unbelievable happened and the person just couldn't accept it. They're like, oh, no, 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 I know what's going on. I got bonked in the head and I'm in a coma. That's the only reason that this could be happening, this incredible whatever it is. Mm. Sounds like a 90s rom-com. She thinks she's in a coma. He's just looking for love. <laughs> Meg Ryan and uh, Greg Kinnear oh, you know and what? 
the call me next dead day. I actually, uh, I just remember where it is. It's uh, it's in uh, Stephen King's The Dark Tower. There's a character who is pulled from 1960s uh, uh, USA into another world, uh, and she's like, well, this is too bonkers. Uh, clearly, I'm having one of my fits, one of my seizures, and uh, that's uh, uh, my brain's just filling in the gaps on everything. You're very sweet, though. All of you seem very nice. Yeah. Okay. And it takes like a whole book for it before she's like, Oh, wait, no, this is all finally happening. Uh, Got you. Yeah. Uh, well, that's my stories for you. Uh, you guys got any picks? How, how's, what's, what's picking lately? Uh, uh, pick, man. Pick, pick your mind. Uh, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad that within the same week, we, uh, most of us saw both Oppenheimer and Barbie. Two movies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hooray for movies. Yeah, and, they, yeah. and, they, and they were both good enough to talk about. That was, that was what I was worried about when we went to go see both of them last week was like, <sighs> One of these is gonna stink. Right. One of them is gonna be like just straight out bad, and it's and then it's gonna be oh well one of them is gonna dunk on the other one and blah 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 blah. But I, I don't know. I just love I love the fact that like these are movies that are worth having a dialogue about. I I missed oh man. Uh, yeah, remember when we were in lockdown and we were doing happy hour every day, mm -hmm. and and we still haven't gotten to a point where we can even do our movie draft where we would just celebrate the weird meat grinder of money being made for Hollywood. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I, I would like to get back to that. If only there wasn't another disaster on the horizon that was going to possibly <laughs> cut the knees off of that industry. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bryce, did you ever go see one or the other? I, uh, the strike was made in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't. Uh, I still, um, uh, I think this weekend I might try to see one of them. I think I might go see Barbie this weekend. Hey, Barbie. <laughs> that's a song that's in the very beginning. But they don't have the Aqua song, right? Uh, they, they, they have, or do they have that Nicki Minaj? They have, they thing have, yeah, they have the Nicki Minaj Ice Spice. Uh, That's okay, I guess. Thing at the end, but it's not in the. No, she's there's... a Barbie girl, <laughs> and she's in a Barbie world. Yeah, right. I mean, the problem, so yeah, is that it's an adult, like, thing. The song. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's, there's adult. There's I mean, innuendo on a level that that movie. Kind of trying. You're to talking steer about away the original Aqua song. The Aqua yeah. song. Yeah, the Aqua yeah. song is not being kind to Barbie when it says. Uh, well, uh, is, is <laughs> taking Barbie into an adult realm. Yeah. Where consenting well, adults can have consenting yeah. adult <laughs> relationships of uh, power dynamics and uh, okay and, and the like. Uh, mm, I don't know. I I look. I know that yeah. song well because it is an Ashley and I oh, couples. Sure. It's your karaoke song. <laughs> yeah, a karaoke staple because I can do the Euro trash voice. Oh. Come on, Barbie. Let's go, Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, man, it's not good that that was my habitual response to that. <laughs> that, that was the call and response. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, 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 what, are, what are some other things? Um, uh, uh, I, I got one here. That's Let fine. Me... I mean, you name two. Yeah, and we... that'll be my two as well. Okay. Which one of us picked Barbie? Which one of us picked Oppenheimer? You'll never know. Go see both of them. Hooray, movies. <laughs> Brought to you by Haunted Mansion. <laughs> In theaters <laughs> now. Um, hey, have you guys I... heard that thump again? Uh, I, I heard it a few times, but I'm, I'm not going to stop the show every every time <laughs> that it happened. Uh, um, uh, but you shouldn't stop on the way to the theater to go see Haunted Mansion. See Jared Leto's weird nose. Mm. Um, I've got a, a YouTube pick here. Um, I've been really diving into this guy's videos the past uh, week or so. Um, uh, this is one of his more recent videos uh, where he uh, asked ChatGPT to design a game, and then he made the game in Tabletop Simulator, and he had his friends play it, and it's a really chaotic, uh, messy time. Um, his name is Vale Fisk. I'll have the link in the show notes here. Um, but, but like this video is, is very good. It came up, the chat GPT came up with all the cards and all of the, uh, all the mechanisms. So like when two people enter a room, they can battle, but they don't, they have stats, but battles are, um, 
are democratically decided. So everyone <laughs> has to vote on who would win and why. <laughs> That's pretty good. It sounds like a game I would invent. It yeah. sounds like a like a sheer ex, you know excuse for yelling at each other, which is most of my game design. Yeah, <laughs> which John, is John Teasdale. Teasdale's the one who comes up with all the like weights and numbers and whether or not it's balanced. And I'm like, uh, you turn to the person on your left and you yell a horrible secret. <laughs> and he's like, well, what's the gameplay? A secret. secret. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and he's got he's got a lot of videos like this where he, where they're playing board games or they're doing um, interesting sort of challenges, different takes on things, or um, a lot of them where they're like it's Monopoly, but it's like Mega Monopoly, and they're like instead of one ring that just you go around, it's got three boards and like twelve rings across the different boards and. All sorts of stuff, but and uh, uh, to be clear, this is one where he had the gameplay described by Chat GPT, and then he programmed it using its words, or mm -hmm. did he actually have GPT program it? Uh, so this is is built in um, Tabletop Simulator, um, and so he had Chat GPT describe the game and write out the cards, write out the classes and the stats and things, and then he put it together um, in Tabletop Simulator. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, good to see you, man. Awesome. So check that out. We'll have a, a link in the show notes. Any other picks to pick up? Marvel Snap. I like it more now that I've hit the highest level oh, you can hit. Oh, he did it. Yeah. The boy what did is that, it. What does that get you? Does, does that give you like a t-shirt? It gets you a unique card back that you get stickers? intimidates other people yeah. because they know they're playing with somebody who hit the highest with number. The best. It yeah. also gives you a lack of incentive to keep playing. Yep. <laughs> although although they do have this other tournament mode where Conquest. Yeah, that one's pretty Conquest. good. Conquest. But you have to you have to really dedicate some time to that one. What yeah. is what's the short version of that? Uh, it's just uh, uh, instead so instead of right now the main ladder as it's called is you rank up but with individual one-off fights. The problem is you have no idea what deck you're up against. You just have to do best practices and try to guess what they're playing as. Mm -hmm. But in Conquest, you 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 have 10 lives a piece so you can uh, fake each other out by doubling the stakes and then also you both play with the same deck multiple times so by the end of the first round you know exactly what they're going for and then you have the advantage of trying to mess with them on it. Mm. The problem is, is like. Uh, so it, does that mean you play up to best of twenty games? Uh, uh, it could take up to six, like around around. Oh, okay, the, so best the, of ten. Uh, uh, well, uh, unless it, it could be as as little as two, because you could both. If you're max spend. betting, yeah. Exactly. You could oh, both bet, you max. bet. That's right. You do the betting thing. Right, but 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 never more than six. By the time it gets to six, the game gets annoyed with you, and it's like, all right, both of you, sudden death, go, and and so, but okay. it's still uh, a long time but it's uh uh it's cool it's a, it's a, it's a it's a cool game nice it's nice. Uh, it's very polished i know it's very polished all the animations and the effects and stuff are very cool yeah all right well that'll do it here for the weird things program uh, i've been bryce uh, it's been justin and brian it's been weird stop it <laughs> oh that was me <laughs> yeah uh, but it could be you that was in the so theater short. this weekend. <laughs> How come I didn't hear any of this? So I weird. Don't I don't know. Why was it? Oh, man, that episode was really short. I How don't know why long it was, was it? It's like 40 minutes. All right. I know. That's fine. Yeah. 40 minute episode. It was good. It was a little, good. A little uh, easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. It's not every but a big time that we boom. get to book an actual ghost. Yeah, <laughs> we had a great <laughs> ghost. Me? Wait, what He's a, a guess. fisherman who only ghost. caught one fish. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, is, this is wild. <laughs> Uh, you guys want to do a short little uh, after things? Yeah, we could do that. But there's, um, uh, I'll bring it up afterward. Uh, uh, but I, I, uh, I got sent a trailer for a ghost hunting show, and uh, the the phrase "see extraordinary proof" oh. uh, was in the go. It's like, boy, if there's anything to prove that, like, no matter what anybody says, like. The concept of ghosts and haunting are just going to be something that just stays around forever, forever. never, never. It's just it is ancient. It is as old as the sea, and it will be here long after anybody, uh, uh, no matter what anybody says. But boy, the inexhaustible fascination we have with 
this like haunting is so interesting to us that we will just watch dipshits <laughs> in an abandoned room go whoa 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 yep yeah uh okay if well, you guys need a break before we do after no uh, uh, you know what? Here, I'll join you in just a bit. My dad is here. Your dad I, is. I need yeah, to find out why. All right, okay, okay. okay, me and you, bro. Yeah, you guys, sorry. Okay. I'll be right back. All righty. Do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. Here, you can help me. I, 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 we, we could do a little brainstorm. I need a little brainstorm session for a Marvels thing. Okay, cool. All right. Well, then let's begin the uh, after things program here. In. Three, two. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. Bryce Castillo joined, as always, with one Justin Robert Young. Yo, what up? And so that'll be fun. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Yeah. Eventually, uh, Brian will be here. He'll be here. His dad came, and, and that was shocking, and so he went over to get some answers. Yeah. Uh, this is our show about being creative professionals online. Yeah. On the internet, getting things done. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, a marbles update. I've talked on the show a lot about my marbles project, um, the uh, uh, the marbles racing uh, streams where the chat room gets to race along. Yes. Uh, we just wrapped up our sixth season last night. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And we just announced um, a one-off thing that we're going to do in two weeks called the Fruit Cup. Okay. And the idea – so normally the way that the marbles races work is we go live on Twitch – you show up in the chat room, you type the thing in chat, and you join the race. Yeah. And that's it. Um, but I've been wanting to figure out a way to work in. I've got a Patreon for people to support to support that show. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to do races, uh, like a bonus race or something for patrons, something where it's them that, where it's them in, in, in the spotlight. Um, and also where maybe they don't need to be there live. Maybe it's, you know they can be around where they doesn't need to be they need to carve out an evening to be part of it. Um, and so that is the, I guess, main motivation behind the the fruit cup, as, yep. as, I, as I'm calling it. So it'll be, uh, I'm going to take all of the names of uh, the supporters on Patreon. I can put them into the marbles game, and I can just make them go race whenever. And so the idea is going to be we'll do four races um, uh, in a row at once, gather up the points, we'll record it live, um, and then edit it to be like, uh, edit it to be an even, uh, to, to be a sort of poppy sort of YouTube version as well. So you have kind of the live stream, which is a way to watch it while it happens and get reactions and you can have your emoji on screen and stuff. Um, and then having a YouTube part of it that is a little more public facing because right now that's the thing that bugs me with marbles is that I don't have much of a public facing thing. We do the stream, you know, every 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 couple of weeks or so, and then you just have this long hour and a half um, stream archive. Yeah, that is good, but is not as good as something that is a little tighter or a little more produced. So the idea here would be by not needing everyone to join in every race and and always re up, we can do these races faster. We can do them potentially offline if need be um, and still get something that works both for a live stream and for a VOD situation. Well, I would say for you, think about what the stakes are like, cause that that's a, a, an element that doesn't always translate between live and VOD mm -hmm. is like when you are, uh, when you are live watching something, the stakes are I'm here right now. Uh, uh, it it matters that there is a participation, and I would imagine for something like Marbles, which is a, a, a very much an exploitation of that live moment. Like this is just a a drawn out version of we're all here, we're all excited. Yeah, uh, let, let's all draw straws. One person can win, but now we have a billion different things, and and we're gonna spread that out on on a, a period of time, so you are are paying attention to it. Uh, I would say. If it's just about the people, then I would be very, very curious for why somebody that wasn't there would care to watch it on VOD. And that's not to say that the content isn't exciting. Right. 
it is to say that you have to have an answer for that in terms of stakes mm. uh, for it to have a, a, a VOD. Now, maybe that is, you know, a, a form is function. So maybe it's not our, it's not minute and a half faster versions. Maybe it's literally the, the 10 hour leave it on in the background uh, of marbles on marbles on marbles or something. Maybe it's mm -hmm. slowed down version. Maybe it's it, it ways that it's cool to look at or interesting to, to see. Maybe it is a story that you are telling. Maybe that there are there is a, a a a champions league and they are Patreon people and they show up and now you are able to craft a narrative around that and and that's the reason why people care. Uh, it's not an unsolvable problem, but it is, in my opinion, something that you should put thought into because we've all. I mean, this is something that that we've worked in different kinds of media. Yeah, we know. A YouTube audience doesn't translate to a podcast audience. Doesn't matter if it's if if it literally is the thing that they would love the most. Right. If it is not exactly what they want in exactly the form they want, uh, then it is it is hard to do. And what mm -hmm. you have is a very dedicated audience for the live stream. Right. Um, when you think about the audience that you want to find on YouTube, I don't think that it is about either porting your audience over uh, or doing the exact same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, and I would think that the, the part of it is stakes. Part of it is like, let's, let, let's think about what is the most either interesting or exciting thing about marbles that would stretch out to uh, that, that VOD audience. Yeah. The audience. The audience. Oh yeah. I, uh, and and those are things I've I've I, I I might have answers to some of those things. I might not have answers to all of those things. Um, I think that the the format may lend itself to being a better uh, YouTube product product. Right right now, the way I do the live stream, um. You know, it's a two-hour stream that if you wanted to, you could cut it down to 60 or 40 minutes if you really started hacking and hacking and slashing. Um, but even that's kind of long. And I... I, I But th there is a genre for those videos, right? I mean, I think the last time I was over at your apartment, you were watching this, you know, it seemed like it was nine hours long uh, uh, of yeah. this guy who was using his chat room to uh, basically day trade and right. like invest and reinvest and, and do X, Y, or Z. But that's a thing that you kept on in the background. Mm. That was obviously a live stream that probably stretched for hours. That was either sped up or, or had minimal cuts just to make sure that everything was, was constantly yeah, that uh, one, going and going. And, and that one was, so that, so that's, 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 uh, a a a push and pull that I've got with marbles at the moment because the live stream is a little bit of plate spinning because just the way that the game is built every race I have to stop for a couple of minutes so that people can join the next race yeah it's this very frustrating thing where we just kind of have to keep starting and stopping and so uh, during the live stream I try to you know I'm talking and I'm being very engaging and so I'm trying to fill in that space with character and personality um, and and that's and 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 I think that works well for the live stream it keeps people engaged where I think for the YouTube audience having those dead points um, is really uh, is, is, is both is gonna be really tough just because like why would you sit through a timer you don't need to sit through if you want to watch if you want to watch the thing um, uh, well, I think, but, but again, yes, you're right. Like, uh, uh, and so uh, it's just tough that, translating that, that process, right? The, the larger question would be, why do you want to watch a marbles game that you can't participate in? Uh, be, it, be, presumably because it would be exciting to watch on its own. Presume like, uh, yeah, there, there are, there are the other people. There are other people out there doing marbles uh, on YouTube related content, and all of that is 
a, a lot of that is not even participatory. Um, you know, there and, and and along with it, there is a lot of editing, a good amount of production that goes into it, which is another thing that I like about this idea in that it gives me some space between these two uh, products, between the stream and the the edited video, where we can still do the stream and the stream is engaging and people are in and if they really want to play, then they can get on Patreon and solve that and then that's a, a, a way to, to convert folks. Or... Uh, on on YouTube and you and it's it's really tight. We are we get in and out. We don't spend a lot of time. We do a, a, some editing to kind of show people the track, do replays, um, so that you have this morsel. Um, I don't know that that feels like it fits well without also requiring a total overhaul of everything I'm doing. I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh- my lesson for any of this kind of stuff is try, 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 try. Don't get too married to ideas. Uh, uh, oftentimes the idea that the audience has in their head is going to be different than the one that you have. And if you make them enemies and uh, uh, want to be proud uh, about like, no, I'm the brilliant genius. It's like, no, none of us are brilliant geniuses. The, the difference between people who are popular and make a lot of money on their stuff is that they had the humility to do a million different stinky bad ideas yeah. that uh, eventually when one hits, nobody remembers the other ones, yeah. you know, or, or if anything, the people that remember the other ones are like, like, Oh, okay. Well, I remember when he was doing my, it, it almost makes you, uh-huh. they're bound to you more than everything else. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say for you, Try look look at what else is out there. Yeah. See what 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 the landscape is, and then and then go from there. I mean, that's part of the reason why I've not done a lot of YouTube stuff mm-hmm. is because I don't watch a lot of YouTube, mm. and and I can have an idea of what I think the YouTube audience wants, right? But the reality is that the most popular politics uh, uh, YouTube people, for example, are long monologues, long form content, Uh. or people that are taking ideas from or reactions to various different things that happen in the world, and then they put them out there. And I find that to be so tedious. I would rather not try (laughs) than even sit through it so I could understand Understand it, it. so I Uh. I could do something like that. Um, because I am at a point, and this is not a good lesson for me. I'm not saying be like me, be not like me, like be better about doing research, but I'm to a point now where I am so dialed into my output and making sure that I protect my output, the concept of putting time and energy into something that I wouldn't enjoy or don't naturally enjoy is something that I, I'm not super excited about or, 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 or willing to do. And and it's interesting that uh, but it's not too late for you, bro. <laughs> it's it, not too late. You can you can can actually open your eyes to this wider world. It, it's interesting that you describe that because I think because uh, I do watch a lot of YouTube. And now that I now that you say that, I see like a lot of what I watch is Stuff like what you described earlier, stuff that had been streams and then yeah. were turned into highlights or are like highlight compilations, and so I think, I, I think what was what was probably a a touchy lesson for you, uh, or, or or maybe it, it is something that I'm leaning into in a positive way. I watch a lot of things like this. I'm trying. Yeah. This this the idea here would be to 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 make make a sort of a schema like that of yeah. a, of having a live stream that works also for YouTube that is that is um, that that doesn't compromise both I guess yeah uh, uh, I I think that there is a huge market for that there's a huge market for uh, re purposing elements of your live stream which is kind of going it kind of goes against 
some of my thoughts on stuff like this, that every audience demands its own thing, but there does seem to be a tolerance for, oh, cool. Like, yeah, I, I want this kind of content. If I like this personality, I don't care if, if it's a, a highlight from his Twitch stream. Right. Uh, I just, this is my relationship with that stream. I'm never going to sit down and watch it, but... I'll be happy to consume it in highlights on on their channel. I'm going to subscribe to that channel. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't know if you guys have already touched on that, but we've seen in uh, with YouTube Shorts like there's there are there are hundreds of thousands of people who seem to their entire relationship with uh, both Mono Rogue and Scam Nation exists only in one minute chunks, watching parts of shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I think, and that's in our constant drive for content mm. and the fact that your favorite people cannot make content 24 seven, you will oftentimes be excited to see the, it's new for you little tidbit. Uh, and then for a new audience, if it's just like, oh, here's something that we know works, we know is, is, uh, uh, uh awesome. Yeah. Well, boom, best foot forward. Here we go. It's, uh, uh, you know, Brian and Jason making Prudo. Like, that right. was a big video. Now, I'm sure for a bunch of people that just, in, in that waterfall style of content, uh, uh, they're like, what is, these boys are crazy. Right. They're making Prudo? And then later on, it's like, uh, maybe the whole point of that one minute is, oh, that the smaller one sure is grossed out by that. And then, and then, you know, a day later, it's like, well, there they are again. Sure. They're driving a car this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I think that this, this new position, this framework of, hey, it's going to be this smaller group of people who are entered so that presumably you could latch on to somebody even within that one video of however many races and say, oh, I see that person I'm, and I'm kind of following them. Where, Like right now when there's 40, 50, 60 more people in the live stream, it does become tough to follow individual stories like that. Like yeah. we had an amazing end of the stream yesterday where we have that you have to hit a point total to win that evening and nobody had hit it yet. And we are going into the final race and I'm trying to do math live on the air, which is going about as well as you expect. And, uh, and oh, it's cheesy popcorn. If cheesy popcorn wins this race, he's the only one who could get it. If he gets enough points by winning this race, he could win the, the whole thing. And then not only did he win the race, he like set a new record. So he like smashed the record and it, it was this great big thing. And that is that that sort of storyline is really tough to find and follow live. Yeah. Where when there's an editing phase to it, where you still have this live reaction in this live moment, when you can have another editing phase and say, okay, here's a graphic that like reminds you about this person. Here's uh, uh, the line that says like, okay, hey, this person did well in this last race, so now we're kind of following them. So what what I would look for you then to model this off of based on how you just described that is there is a rich world of amateur youtube compilations for sports narratives and some Ooh. some do them uh you know for bigger outlets and some do them uh in in exhaustive quantities but you know i just someone just put a a a thing in the uh, miami heat subreddit that was like why the miami heat versus the boston celtics is the greatest rivalry that nobody talks about and it's like just basically telling the story. It's like, I know how many times that they've played each other in the playoffs. I know how everything happened, but like this guy just put it all together and explain like, Hey, look, that these are all situations that, that, uh, uh, mattered. And I watched it. It was 14 minutes of stuff. I already knew, but I liked it. Now, if you did that for a sport quote unquote, for which, uh, there is less understanding, but you can promise extraordinary stories because your random number generator periodically gen generates some very interesting random numbers. Right. Then yeah, you could say, you know, the tale of what was his name? The guy who, cheesy popcorn. Like you could say, uh, uh, the tale of cheesy popcorn, the greatest marble streak of all time or something. Yeah. Like, and, and, and yeah, so that's, I, I, that's, I don't know. I'm just talking it through a, a little bit. I, I announced it yesterday and I'm still working out some of the finer details, but, I 
feel good about it. I was concerned of like, well, why are you just going to do the same thing, but with less people or less interactivity? But I do, I do have a, a more than a hunch, but I've got a, I've got good, a good signs that this will be something really, um, uh, really entertaining uh, first, just like will be good to watch. Um, and will be just more versatile material to use. More, it'll be easier to make stuff for social media when it's when it's tighter like that. It'll be uh, easier to make evergreen uh, evergreen social media content because most of the stuff you know it's all it's all about the moment. Um, have yeah. you have you thought about doing a um, uh, a special event um, where you do celebrity marbles? So, I mean, that's not dissimilar to what uh, the, the project I'm describing here a little bit is, it, where we're doing marble races, but uh, it's just a one-night series with only patron, only Patreon names. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Yeah, but that, what about that, famous people like Abe Lincoln? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's mm. my point. Is in uh, like that. That's that's facing towards your core demo, your your hardcores. What if uh, what if you did something that. Uh, Faced outwards, uh, discovery yeah. content is is what we often call it. Um, e e yes, and I have, I I do, and I've thought about it, and I've got an idea in my head, and I don't want to say it out loud. Okay. For for for. I think someone's gonna steal it. No, for the thought that I won't get it done, <laughs> for that I won't do. Oh, delayed so gratification. I'm, I'm gonna keep it into my head here, yeah. but I but. Ding 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 ding. Okay. Ding, ding. All right. Cool. So. That's uh, great, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, excited to try out a new thing with marbles and, um, uh, and keep finding new ways to entertain folks. So, uh, yeah. Uh, any other after thingsy questions folks have got on their mind? I think, yeah. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's. You want to know what? How about, how about you stop navel gazing and start doing? Oh. How about, how about we cut, we cut the chit chat and you get to work. Buddy. Get, get working. Get get nose to the grindstone. You ain't got time. If you got time to lean, you got time to clean. That's right. Well, then get up and go. Rise and grind. Just do it. I feel like you're not talking to the audience right now. No, I'm not talking to the. No, I, I mean I'm not trying to do it. I was trying to be funny, but I realized it veered into the actual hectoring that I've been doing. The actual, like, the out and out bullying and shaming that I've been doing to Brian to try and coax a book out of him. All righty. Well, uh, uh, and hopefully we'll get some updates about that in the future. Um, but I think that'll do it here for the After Things program. Uh, thank you, Justin. Thank yes. you, Brian. Yes. Yep. Uh, I've been Bryce. It's been After. Wow. Uh, tap tap tap. Tight day today. Toy 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 toy. Thump thump thump. What did what did the sound sound like? like it sounded it it did sound like a like like it sounded the arm. It sounded so like, wild. Like like I kept thinking that it was my my wheel bumping into the thing. But I was I looking. You weren't moving that. at all. But yeah. Like, oh. All right. Well, that's gonna do it, everybody. Thank you for joining us on a Friday. Go see Haunted Mansion. Go see Haunted Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye 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 bye. And it's a feeling that I'll never forget. Black out the sky, black out my soul.